Hello, everyone. Welcome to Agile World Wellness. Today, we will talk about a very important topic, which is called psychological safety. So in the very beginning, we need to understand what it is. And this is to do something with your emotions and feelings and invisible things which happen inside of you. And from neuropsychological perspective and our physiology, we need to agree that our limbic system, which is responsible for emotions and feeling, it's an open system, which means that the state you're in and everything what is overwhelming you from inside, it is contagious and you are transferring your emotions to other team members and people you're interacting with. Your blood system is actually a closed system. So really in the interaction with other people, you don't affect the results of their blood analysis. But with emotions, you really do. And this makes you actually take responsibility for your emotions and also understand that you're also kind of responsible for emotions of others because you can transfer them. How do you do that? Of course, you are verbalizing things, your voice, things you say, but also if you're not really talking a lot and you jump into the meeting, your face expression, pupils, body language, you know, the way non-verbally you are interacting, it can also transfer the negative emotions if you have. So if your emotions are positive, you are happy, you're satisfied, you're super excited, you're very curious, then just go and spread the positive vibe. And actually, it is a real recommendation. If you are in a flow mood, you know, in the mood when you're getting creative, you're super agile, and you really feel like a rock star, use this opportunity to talk to people, to organize a meeting, to have a spontaneous chat, to do a presentation, because these would be the positive emotions you are transferring. And in this way, you can motivate or engage your team. But what to do if your emotions, the ones which are, you know, boiling, burning from inside, they can be considered as negative. They can be considered as um, toxic as well, not constructive for sure. If you have a possibility uh, to just stop and, you know, put yourself on hold, on pause, it is uh, really kindly recommended. If you have a meeting and it's really better to be late for some 5, 10, 15 minutes, then to jump on the meeting and right away spread the virus of the negative vibe. So you can just write a message writing that you will be late and quality do a quality investment into getting yourself into balance. And as we know, every motion lasts not more than five minutes. Otherwise, we would really... Uh, be overwhelmed and we couldn't survive of high intensity. So give yourself time. You can be late for the sake of afterwards having a very productive meeting and interaction with people. If you are in a harder emotional state and you really have the possibility to move your Zoom meeting or a physical meeting to another part of the day or the day after, it's also kindly recommended. Now, of course, sometimes we just don't have time and we just need to go and to be with people. So what can we do to fix ourselves very quickly? If you are having just, let's say, a few minutes or five minutes to, to settle yourself and, and to make a setup so you're not contagious, you don't spread the negative vibe, then you can really do some physical activity, jumping, uh, doing a cardio dance, you know, running around your house, doing anything that will really uh, increase the blood pressure, including including your brain, and it will, uh, on neuromediator level, uh, switch on some uh, neuromediators responsible, you know, for pleasure, having fun, and it can really help you to switch. Uh, for some people, meditation would also work, breathing, uh, adding a, a bit more of oxygen to your brain, and so boosting your energy level, because sometimes Sometimes our emotions are coming just because we're burning out and the energy levels are, you know, devastating. Uh, if you want, you can have a pleasant snack, maybe dried fruit or maybe um, a little piece of a black chocolate. 
to with sugar in order or a fruit in order to boost your sugar levels in the blood. That's also a life hack for all parents which are meeting their children in kindergarten and school. Give your little ones something something to eat like a slice of banana because when our blood sugar levels decrease we become very very nervous and uh, you know it can lead to bad uh, results in interaction with other people. What else you can do? You can do a very unpredictable activity for your brain, you know, to switch it to something, something you haven't planned. Uh, maybe some routine at home if you're working remotely, uh, maybe making an unexpected call, maybe drawing something, uh, maybe singing uh, while others are not listening to you if you have a safe place. You know, really switching to something which will um, ruin the planned course of the day or, you know, switch on the creativity. So I don't know if you have anything around to draw or to mold, um, but if you do something expressive, artistic and creative, creativity blocks amygdala and switches on the thinking brain and prefrontal lobe. You can also do this. Uh, what else? Uh, being conscious in the end, making an audit of your emotion. How can I mark this emotion? How can I call this emotion? Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Is it anger? Is it anything else? When you label your emotion, you put it under your control. It's not the emotion which actually guides you, but you are the boss. You know, you are the one who puts a name and nickname to your emotion. And then when you understand what it is, you need really to admit it. You need to accept it instead of fighting. You need to say, okay, I have the right to, to be angry. I have the right to be super sad now. I accept my emotion and it is given to me for, for some reason right? It's my resource. And this is already 80% of the story just to understand what happens, to admit it and to accept it instead of fighting with the wind. And then you can do a very quick deep dive, becoming a coach for yourself, asking, okay, but why do I have this emotion? What's the reason? What caused it? Who caused it? Or what caused it? And uh, this will already be a mini express retrospective, you know, which also give you the a feeling of more control of what happens because you analyze it and you put it if you can write it with your hand then it's you know fantastic because the micromotorics which you involve it also helps you to restore the the good balance you need to have to work and to thrive and then when you understand what happens when you understand you know that's okay and you understand why uh, it happens. You can shoot a hypothesis why later you can deep dive more. Then you need to very quickly think of an action you can do. So now I will jump, now I will sing, now I will draw something and become an artist just for 60 seconds. Now I'll get a nice cup of green tea. Now I will call my, my darling daughter to have a nice chat. Or I will plan doing something in the evening, next day, maybe talking to somebody, making uh, analysis of data, whatever. You need to do something right away, even if it's a very small, tiny, whiny activity, and to plan the next step. So your brain understands that now there is no reason to continue uh, having this emotion because you already do something and you will do something in the future. That's the algorithm. And basically, if you train doing that, you would need just a few minutes to do that. And um, you can try it and you can fill it with your skin and it, it really can help. Breathing would help uh, some people like uh, different techniques. Uh, we have a lot of techniques from yoga. Uh, for some people, breathing will not work. For some people, this analysis will not work because their brain is already having the high intensity of the feelings and the amygdala is blo blocking the thinking brain. So for them, I don't know, kickboxing or having a crazy uh, dance would work better. So it really depends on how intense is the emotion. It really depends on your individual 
preferences and the way you are, the way your, your own psychology works. So today we talked about the importance of psychological safety. I shared with you some, la some life hacks in order to get into a normal state interacting with people because this is step number one and the most crucial thing, not to spread the negative emotions and then have problems, more problems to deal with. See you soon. Hopefully, we will talk more about such an important topic as psychological safety. Thank you and have a wonderful day. 